In this final lesson for module 5, you create structural openings in a floor. Structural openings can be added within a floor profile. Multiple closed profiles can be added which is quick and efficient. Alternatively, you can add openings with the shaft opening tool which will allow cutting through multiple floors. However, when using the shaft opening tool, you would also need to add an opening as a profile to ensure that you have a usable analytical model. Notice on the centre image there's a gap between the floor and the walls. We will investigate the analytical model in much more detail in later modules. This lesson continues from module 5.2. Go ahead and open up project A. We want to create two structural openings to allow pipe work to drop down from the roof. So let's begin by opening up the structural plan 00, zero ground. Let's zoom up on the intersection of grid E6, and here we'll add our two structural openings. To do this, we'll select the edge of the floor slab, and then on the context ribbon, we'll select Edit Boundary. In the draw panel, let's go ahead and select Circle. We'll create one circle here, and we'll make the circle 100 millimeters, and we'll create another circle over here, again, 100 millimeters in radius. So that's 200 millimeters, obviously, in diameter. We'll release the circle command by clicking modify. And then we'll go ahead and make a selection set of these two circles. We want to make sure that these are accurately positioned in relation to the other structured elements. To do this, in the properties palette, we'll select center mark visible. This is an important step when you're working with circles within Revit. We can now dimension these, so I can go to the Aligned Dimension tool, select the edge of the slab, and then I'll select the structural opening, and here we want these 500 millimeters away from the edge of the slab. So to do this, I can select one of the openings, and now use the temporary dimension to type in 500, and I'll do the same on this side here. Another thing I want to do is also set them out in the opposite axes, so I can go to the Aligned Dimension tool again, and this time I'm going to go from grid and I'll place down dimensions on these structural openings here. Select modify to release the command and I'll begin by setting out this one here. So this one's going to be 500 and we'll do the same with this one over here. Okay, so you can now see the structural openings are set out. To finalize the command, I can select the finish edit mode on the ribbon. And you can now see we have two structural openings shown in plan. Let's also investigate the 3D model. So let's now switch to 3D. And now we can clearly see in the 3D model, we have our two structural openings. The openings would also show on the analytical model. To open the analytical model in the project browser, let's double click on analytical model. And now you can clearly see the two penetrations through the ground floor slab. Now in this example, we don't actually want those to feature into our structural analysis. So we'll need to remove those. To do that, we can select the Analyze ribbon, and on the Analyze ribbon, we'll select Adjust. In the Edit Analytical Model panel, let's go ahead and select Openings, and we'll remove the two check marks here, and again finish this by clicking the green tick. So now you'll notice that those small structural openings are not going to feature on our analysis model. However, for coordination, you can now see those openings appear. And of course, also for drawings, we'll see those structural openings. Let's now move on and use a shaft opening for our lift shafts. So we'll zoom out here to the core area. And we'll begin by selecting the structure ribbon. And on the structure ribbon, you'll notice we have shaft. Let's go ahead and select shaft opening. On the context ribbon in the draw panel, you'll notice here that we have boundary line. This of course has to be a closed boundary. So I'm going to select rectangle and I'm going to create a shaft opening that encapsulates all of these lift cores. It's good practice to constrain these. So I'm going to click the little padlocks here, which will constrain those boundary lines to the structural walls. If the structural walls move or change position or size, then of course the boundary lines would also move as well. On the context ribbon, I'm now going to change the mode from boundary line to symbolic line. 
With symbolic lines, we can now sketch the lines that we want to appear in each structural plan. You'll notice as I do this on the options bar, I haven't got chain enabled because I want to draw single lines. So I'm just going to go through and draw all my symbolic lines. And we'll do the same here. You may, uh, you may find that you need to use the tab key here to actually locate the endpoint snap. Or of course here, I could type in SE and then I can snap to that endpoint. OK, so my symbolic lines are added. Notice in the properties palette, we can set a base constraint and also a top constraint for our shaft opening. So I want to take the shaft opening all the way up to the third floor. So it's going to go from ground with a base offset of negative 300 up to the top constraint of the third floor. So we're now ready to finalize this. So again, on the context ribbon, we'll select finish edit mode. Now, the great thing with shaft openings is if I now go ahead and open up the first floor, you'll see, of course, that the symbolic lines are featuring in those details. However, the analytical model will not work for us. If we now switch to the analytical model and we zoom into where the slab meets the walls, we'll see there's a slight gap. The reason for this is Revit is not automatically detecting the position of the floor slab and the walls with the tolerance. We'll come onto this in a later module when we look at the analytical model in much more detail. But what we're going to do now to fix this is we're going to create a profile opening in our slab that will repair the problem. So let's go ahead in the project browser and open up the second floor plan. We'll select our slab and on the context ribbon, we'll select edit boundary. Again, we'll zoom into this core area here and on the draw panel, I'll use rectangle. And I'm going to sketch the same kind of structural opening in here and I'm also going to constrain these four lines to the walls and then go ahead and select the green tick. I'll do the same on my first floor. So once again, I can select the edge of the slab. We can select edit boundary and we can use our rectangle and sketch that in. Again, I'll constrain that. And finally, we can go to our ground floor slab. And once again, I'll select the edge of the floor slab, select edit boundary. And again, we can sketch our rectangle in place. We'll constrain the lines and click green tick to finish. And of course, now, if we look at the 3D view, we should see that we have our penetrations through the core and the lifts. So there they are. And also, if we go into the analytical model, we can now see that the floor slabs terminate on the faces of the wall. So we have structural continuity. As I've said, we'll learn much more about that in further modules. OK, so that concludes this lesson and also module five.